Welcome to Work From Your Happy Place, the podcast that equips you with the tools, know-how, and motivation to live your dreams and find your happy place. Be sure to sign up for our free weekly newsletter for a recap of the week's guests and a preview of what's in store. To sign up, simply text the word happy place with no space to 33444. Now, it's my pleasure to introduce the host of Work From Your Happy Place, Belinda Ellsworth. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Work From Your Happy Place. I'm your host, Belinda, and I have a delightful guest in store for you today. I have Oliver Roland with me. He is an author, international speaker, a blogger, and has been an entrepreneur since the age of 19. His unique approach to entrepreneurship has inspired hundreds of thousands of people worldwide. The French language edition of The Way of the Intelligent Rebel has sold over 100,000 copies, and his English book, The Way of the Intelligent Rebel, released in July 6, 2021, has been highly recommended by many authors. It is my pleasure to welcome Oliver to our show today. Hello. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So let's just dive in here, fill in some of the gaps of your bio, and tell us a little bit more about your journey, how you came to be a writer, how you came to be an expert in your field, and do what you do today. Sure. So uh, I dropped school at the age of 18 to uh, create my first company uh, because basically I was uh, very, very bored at school and I was looking for a way to escape. And I was very shy as a teenager. And like a lot of shy people, I really uh, uh, went deep into the world of computers because it's a world that is both uh, fascinating and also that doesn't require a lot of human interactions, you know. (laughs) 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 And I realized with a friend uh, that uh, we basically could solve problems that was like very difficult for people uh, like this, you know. And we had the idea to test our idea to see if we could make money with these skills. And we did. Uh, We were able to do it. We we did like a a small ad in a local newspaper for maybe like 10 uh, euros. uh, And we had like 1,000 euros of sales in one month. So for us, it was like amazing. And this gave me the confidence to drop school very early and to start my first company. And it was an amazing adventure. But after a few years, like five years, uh, well... I was 24 and I was looking to have a bit more balance between my professional and my personal life. And the problem is like most entrepreneurs, I was working like 60, 70 hours a week. And then I realized with a shock that actually the the business I created to be free was actually a jail I built for myself because I couldn't see how to work less in my company without uh, putting it in a risk, you know. I couldn't see how to sell it. I couldn't see how... Uh, I couldn't stop it because it was my only source of income. And so I was basically trapped in this situation. And I looked for years for solutions. And I read a book um, in 2008 that completely changed my life. It's The 4 Work Week by Tim Ferriss. Mm-hmm. And it gave me the motivation, inspiration to create an online business. So uh, I started, you know, to with a blog about books because I realized that books can be very, very helpful, practical books, obviously, uh, for entrepreneurs, businessmen, and just people who want to uh, do something with their life, you know. And from there, I basically created my whole uh, ecosystem uh, on YouTube, Instagram, uh, Facebook to help people have a business that's in service of uh, of their life instead of their life being in service of their business. And so today I have maybe like half a million people who follows me every month. It's it's hard to tell exactly how many because, you know, there is an overlap between each uh, platform. Um, And yeah, I I have been traveling the the world for six months, so yes, since 2010, a little bit less in 2020 because of the the situation. Uh, And I I inspire, uh, well, a lot of people... Uh, to to be more free in their life, you know. So I I specialize in content marketing. How with free content you will build a, a tribe of prospect fans and customers uh, that uh, you will help to 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 solve a problem or be better at something they love to do. Very good. So you you specialize in teaching people to be more free, and you know what? That was probably one of the best analogies that I've ever heard anybody refer to is you were 
getting into entrepreneurship to kind of have this freedom and yet you absolutely were in jail. (laughs) And that is so true. I can relate to that because I put so many hours into my business and sometimes, you know, I still can choose, but when you have so much that you're doing and you're having so much work, it can sometimes feel like that you are trapped in that situation. And I loved what you said about um, you couldn't really stop because it was your only source of income. So it it is a, a situation that a lot of entrepreneurs find themselves in. Um, so can you share maybe your three top tips for creating more freedom in your life? Sure. Uh, so there are a lot of things you can do. Um, I, I think th- I in the beginning of my book, uh, I... I uh, the emphasis and I highlight uh, three principles that I think are really at the foundation of these. The first principle is what I call the healthy skepticisms. So it's basically uh, these ideas that from time to time you will encounter like an idea, a method, uh, a strategy that will sound too good to be true. And the first, uh, you know, reaction will be like, oh, I'm sure it's a scam or, oh, uh, come on, if it will be so easy, everyone will do it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And it's perfectly healthy to have this kind of reaction, you know. Um, but what I found is uh, what I'm using right now is method that I what I found too good to be true at the start. But the difference is you you want to use these skepticisms as a good in a good way, as a motivation for you to try the things, because actually there are methods everywhere in every field, even in things that are really important for you that are more effective than others. And everything, you just have to look at all the objects around you, like uh, this book in color, uh, this uh, light bulb, everything, this computer we are using to to do this interview. It it will have seemed like a miracle for the grandfathers of our our grandfathers, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, But but now it it, it has become common because, yeah, it it was a miracle method at some point and then it became the standard. And sometimes it just, as the author uh, William Ginson said, the future is already here. It just not spread uh, really well yet. You know, right. so sometimes mm-hmm. you just stumble upon a method that will become the standard in the future, but it's not yet. And so how do you separate what is the good method from, from the bad ones? Well, the only way to really know if it's going to work for you is, is to try them, you know. Mm-hmm. So the, the difference between the good and the bad uh, skepticisms is just that you, you, you still have the same reaction as the start. But when you are a good skeptic, you use this reaction as a motivation to do a, an experiment, a scientific experiment to see if really it works for you or not. So obviously you cannot try everything, right? But the idea is to keep an open mind and to choose carefully, you have to choose your battles, what methods you want to try. And sometimes you will stumble upon something that works very well for you and that will seem completely crazy or impossible for most people. So that's that's the first principle. Uh, the uh, The second principle, I already shared it, it's just this... You have to understand and really not only understand, but really uh, feel in your gut that in every, every field, you have methods that are more effective than others. Even in things that are really important for you. Like, I don't know, I think everyone wants to, uh, you know, be in a loving relationship uh, Mm -hmm. with a spouse. uh, And you have method to uh, not only meet the right uh, people, but also to make sure, not to make sure, but like to put the odds in your favor so the relationship will uh, be amazing and stay uh, as long as possible. And you can study that. Um, you, you can also study method to uh, make more money and to be more free, you know. Uh, when you look at the default behavior of most people, they are employees, which is fine, but it's basically the worst way to earn money ever because when you do that, you exchange what you have the most precious, which is your time that you cannot, mm-hmm. you know, cannot put in the bank. We know that, right? Uh, every hour you don't use, it's, it's gone forever. You exchange what you have the what is more special for you for money. So in a way, even though most of them don't realize it, employees are the people who put money uh, at the highest priority, you know, because they are willing to exchange what they are, what is most precious for them to get it. Um, and so you, you can find hundreds of methods that are not effective that exchanging your time for money you know, to, 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 to make money. And the third principle is the Pareto principle that is very famous. It is idea that in most of the things we do, uh, 80% of the results will come from 20% of our actions. 
And right. You, you know that, right? Yes, so, yes. So, so when you combine the three principles, you, will, you are always looking for methods that are more affecting than others. You try them with uh, LT skepticisms, and then you use the Pareto principle to really like um, get the essence of them, you know? So that's the, the general principle. Now, if you want, we can uh, dig a little bit deeper into uh, practical things you can use to be more free as an entrepreneur. Sure. I love that. Let's just talk about a couple because I think this is, um, I'm, we're going to delve into the rest of our questions, but I think that this is, honestly, this is the questions I get asked all of the time. Like people want practical tips on how to have, a lot of people call it work-life balance, but really at the end of the day, it is freedom. You know, they, they yes. want to be free to enjoy their life at the same time they're enjoying their business. Yes. So uh, the first tip is a bit counterintuitive, but uh, before even you, you, you start to learn how to be more productive, to delegate and these kind mm -hmm. of things, you, you want to have something else. Because the problem is, let's imagine you, you learn a strategy to be more productive and you gain, let's say, two hours per week. The problem is, if you don't know what you will going to do with these two hours, you will be in front of your computer when this time uh, <laughs> slot will open. And what, what will be your default behavior if you are in front of your computer with nothing to do? You will find something to do on your computer. Yep. And you will try to find work even if you don't really have something to do, right? So the first step is to find something, something outside of work that really excites you, that makes you can't wait to close your computer to do it. It can be like a passion, hobby, you know, a sport, an art, mm -hmm. something. For me, it's traveling. When I, tra I travel, I saw you have been traveling uh, six months a year for 10 years. And when I travel, I want to do one billion things besides working. You know, I want to explore the place, meet the people. Right now, I'm in Cancun, for example. Uh, and I, I want to do the activities. I want just to enjoy the atmosphere, you know, like. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't want to stay in front of my computer for six, seven, 70 hours a week. So it's something that really motivates me to close my computer as fast as possible, but still do the work. So when you have these, immediately you become more effective because you will have less tendency, you know, to just uh, be lost on the internet for hours. Mm -hmm. You will have more incentive to learn and apply productivity methods. You will have more incentive to delegate to your team, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I mean, you don't beat yourself too hard if you don't find something like this immediately, but at least keep your brain into a search mode for something that will make you impatient to close your computer. Right? Very good. Um, yes. Yeah. And, and then you have all the strategies and methods you can use to be more productive and, and delegate. You know, I, I love to say that um, everyone should see his business as the prototype of a franchise. Even if you don't want to do a franchise, you have, you have to, you, you need to have this idea of, okay, what should I do if, if I want someone to copy what I do in another city or another country, you know, or, or another language, what should I, should I document? So this person can know everything I know and do it himself or herself without asking me too much questions, too many questions. So, uh, you know, just an ex a very basic example. So basically the, this idea of doing processes, you know, uh, a, a very, very uh, important invention in the history of humanity is writing. Because of writing, suddenly we were able to transmit knowledge uh, even uh, through centuries, you know, so mm -hmm. through generations and generations. And also, once you invented writing, writing, you don't need to repeat something all the time. You just can just write it right time and then people can read it. But when you look at how most of the small companies work today, they still work like in prosaic time before the, the invention of writing. What does it mean? It, mean, it means like most of the time the knowledge in, is only in the brains of the people. Yep. And, and it's bad because it means you have to rely on the people to get the knowledge. And usually, the founder, the leader of the company, he's the one with the most knowledge of the company and is like indispensable in the organization and people have to ask him questions all the time. And that's what, 
that's one of the reasons they, the, the, these people work 60, 70 hours a week. And it's also a reason that when they go on holidays, on vacations, they, they still have to, to be, uh, you know, reachable. Like the, yep. the, their team has to call them, you know. So you need to document your knowledge. And it can sound very boring. And I'm not promising you like you will have the most exciting time of your life doing this. But you can do very, very simple things to do it. So, for example, today... Like most of the things we do in most companies, it's on computers, right? So yeah. it, it means it's so easy. The next time you explain something to someone, at the same time, you just record your screen. It's so easy. You have like plenty of software that can do that, free software, pet software, it doesn't matter. You can just click on rec and then suddenly it will record everything you say and you, you show and you demonstrate to your employee or freelancer. And then... You will have a video, a recording, and it's going to be a process. The next time this person doesn't remember exactly the process, he can look at the video instead of uh, asking you. If he's on holidays and need to, to give the task to someone, he can just show the video. Uh, if, yeah, you need to replace him, same thing. And imagine that with all the processes in your company. And it doesn't require much more time, you know? And mm -hmm. even if, if you want to uh, explain something that is not on the computer, well, you just use a smartphone. And you record yourself explaining the thing at the same time. You know, it doesn't take more, much more time. Right. So just this, you know, to have this mindset of documenting and putting the knowledge in the Dropbox or in the cloud. Right. It's going to make a huge difference in the long term. Huge difference. And it doesn't take much more time. And what you can do too, you, you can also write the processes. Uh, that's what I recommend, but it's, it's, not, it's a bit boring and a bit tedious. If you want to have uh, everything, you know, like uh, uh, the, all, all the best in the world, you just do videos and then you ask someone in your team to uh, create a writing process from the video. Yeah. Because the video is great for the demonstration, but it's a bit hard to scan. So the best is to have the video and the written process so people can search them very easily. Very good. That's great advice. What do you think that you've identified as two of your greatest skill sets? Yes. So uh, the, the first one is this idea that you can create free content uh, and distribute it freely. And it's going to create a huge business for you at basically no cost or very low cost. Um, and also... It's, it's connected to what I just shared because I al I'm always looking for a way to duplicate myself. See, there is, a, there is this idea of having not only the, the knowledge in the Dropbox for your team, but you can also uh, copy your knowledge for the public to see. And what you want to do is to create content that will attract qualified prospects for your business. So you need to think about this. Um, I have a YouTube channel in French with like 260,000 subscribers. I made more than 1,800 videos. I love to say that every one of these videos is a clone of myself working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And it's going, they're going to, going to uh, work for me for free for years, the years to come, you know? Right now, while we are talking, like thousands of people are reading my articles, watching my videos, reading my book, and I don't have to be here. Right. So right. Uh, it depends, obviously, of what type of business you are in. But let, let's let's talk about a very, very uh, basic, uh, you know, business like a bakery. Right. OK. Like, like a bakery, it's, it can seem a bit complicated to create content uh, that will attract qualified prospects. But you, it's very easy. You don't have really like complicated things to do. Uh, a baker, what he can do is it, just when he wakes up and he does the bread in the morning. He just record himself doing it. He just do a video with his smartphone saying, hey, guys, uh, it's 5 a.m. I just woke up. I'm going to do your bread. Let me show you how, how I do it. Okay, I do it like this, like this, like this. And it just shows, you know, and here is how you, I do a cake. Oh, and uh, uh, Michel from the neighborhood, he just ordered a, a, a cake for his birthday. So let me show you how I do it. And just these, you know, he published on Facebook, on YouTube, on Instagram. He's not going to uh, have like a, a worldwide success, but just in his neighborhood, immediately, it will make a difference in his city, 
Everyone will talk about this, this baker who has a YouTube channel and just show what he, he, he does every day, but he, he shows and people are, will be curious. People will, will love to see the process behind it. People will love, will want to meet him. We want to go to his bakery. Um, and that's just one example among uh, many others. And you'd, you see how like it's not costly to do this. It doesn't take much more, more time and it's going to work for you for the years to come. So I'm, that's also one of my specialty, always to look for ways to make your work work for you, you know, accumulate yes. instead of disappearing. And that's also a key to have a, success, a business that is in service of your life. I love that. Love, love, love that. And that was a great analogy. And thank you for sharing that with our audience, because sometimes I think it's hard for people to put in perspective, but that was an easy thing to understand and everyone can relate to that depending on what kind of business that they have about the baker or the florist or whatever the case may right. be. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So what is something that uh, has been a, a big accomplishment for you at this point in your life um, that is super meaningful for you? Uh, that's a great question. Well, um, in uh, 2012, I I already had like a big success more than what I expected with my uh, internet business. So I was already traveling six months a year. I was making more money that I could dream of and I, that I could spend because I'm very minimalist. Uh, and I was inspiring thousands of people. So it was a great place, but also a bit scary because I was like, okay, great. What is the next step? You know? Yeah. And um, I was inspired by, by a Maslow's pyramid. You, I'm sure you, you know this, you know? This is this idea of uh, first you need to have like a shelter, water, food, and then you can climb, uh, go to the next step, which is like you want to do work that is interesting. You want to be connected to your tribe, etc., etc. Yes. And, and the, 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 the last two steps are basically uh, the self-realization and giving value to the world. And I was like, okay, how I can realize myself and also give a lot of value to the world? And I always dreamed of being a writer. And when I created my first business at 19, I didn't know anything about life. You know, I made so many mistakes. I, I lost so much time. And I was like, hey, okay, I know what I want to do. I want to write the book that I wish I would have when I started my company at 19. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be my masterpiece. It's going to be the way I realize myself. And it's going to be my way to give back to the world. Uh, and I, yeah, I, I worked uh, four, uh, four years on it, you know, not full time, but uh, still a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. And so it, it's a far from perfect book, but I really gave everything I had to write it. Uh, and, you know, I was like, I don't know how many people will be interested in this book. Um, hopefully enough, you know, I already had a, a, an audience. So I, I remember I told my publisher, hey, I know I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sell at least 10,000 copies of this book, but I don't know if it will be in three months or three years or more. And it sold uh, 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 10,000 copies in three weeks. So I was like blown away by the success. And now uh, the book uh, had reached more than 100,000 copies in French. It's, it's being, it has been translated in English, as you said, as the title, The Way of the Intelligent Rebel. And I'm so happy and proud of this, you know. Uh, because it, it, this book had a huge, huge uh, opportunity cost in my business. Because if, if I like, had put like uh, as much energy and time on uh, creating new products, I would have made so much more money. But mm -hmm. I already had too, not too much, but enough money, you know. Uh, so I didn't care about that. And, and I was very happy about it. And it's also some, an advice I give to successful entrepreneurs because sometimes they can be the same place I was a bit lost, you know, uh, uh, on, on what is the next step. And I ask them, Maybe I tell them, maybe you, you rely too much on ROI. It's really good to think about ROI when you're an entrepreneur. But sometimes when you already achieve some success, you can, you know, breathe a little bit, you know, and maybe you want to focus more on artistic creation. What is a project you, you want to do right now that doesn't have a, a real ROI or a good ROI, but you still want to do? And maybe, maybe it's, you can create your own masterpiece, you know, in anything you want. Or you just want to get something with this artistic uh, mindset, this artistic point of view. 
So just let go a little bit of the ROI and do something that will be interesting for you. And of course, don't get me wrong, I also made sure that if the book had success, it, it would be good for my company too. But it was mm-hmm. not the, the main purpose. You know, it was not the main purpose. Right. Right. I love that. That was That's a bit of what the podcast has been. I've had really great success in my business. And then I started the podcast four years ago. And, you know, it's been going along, but it feeds me, it feeds me with really inspiring guests. I think that's what it did for me first. And then I had other people, It was uh, they were catching on to it. But the return on investment, if I would have spent the same amount of hours that I was on the podcast doing a new course or doing something else, it would have made way more money. But in the end, um, now five years later, we are getting some notoriety. We're getting a lot more viewers. We are, it's creating more opportunities. And so that return on investment was an instant. It, it took a while, but I was able to do other things as well. And I think that that's what people have to understand too, is the return on investment doesn't have to be instantaneous. And it it doesn't always have to be at the most value of just dollars and cents. There can be um, ROI of of other things like inspiration, like um, networking, like um, integrity. I mean, like there's a lot of things that you can't put a price tag on that does, though, still increase your value in your brand. Yeah, I love that. This idea of having ROI in different fields. It's really good. Yeah, absolutely. Completely agree with you. And you're right also, sometimes also it creates a moonshot that's going to work and, st- and also bring you a lot of businesses and you wouldn't think that in the first place. Exactly. So um, what does working from your happy place mean to you? That's a really good question. Uh, f- for me, you know, so I think people understand now my, very, my core value is freedom. So for me, uh, I really need to feel free. So what does it mean? It means I want to work on things I want. So basically things that excite me when I want, where I want, and with who I want. And with these, I am very happy. <laughs> of course, <laughs> of course it, you cannot have the four things all the time, you know. But right. the idea is to maximize uh, these. Uh, so, so if you have a, most of your time is with these four uh, elements, I mean, it's hard to not be happy, right? And uh, it connects also to the Japanese concept of Ikigai that I'm sure you know too, uh, that this idea of having something you love and that makes money for you and that is connected to your mission in life and also where you are uh, skillful. And when you have the four things, you have your raison d'être, your Ikigai, the the thing that really fuels you, you know, and that uh, makes you live. So I think I found it and I'm really, really happy about it. Um, I mean, I love freedom and I teach freedom. So what is better than to see people who tell me, hey, Olivier, I had this shitty job and now I created this, this, this business because of you and I'm so happy and it's awesome, you know, it's just awesome. I bet that does feel really, really good Yeah, when you have people reaching out. Well, um, that's exciting. And, it, and the book, uh, I just received it. I've just started reading it. So I'm excited to dive in to that a bit more. And I'm, I'm even more excited after our interview to dive into that a little <laughs> bit more. So it's always fun when you get to meet people and hear their story. It makes, it makes their work come to life so much more. So what advice would you give others who kind of are in this place of maybe having a job that they're not really crazy about or even entrepreneurship that they feel trapped in and um, or that they really want to be an entrepreneur? They're in this crappy job and they want to be an entrepreneur, but they don't know how to break out of that either. So what advice would you give to someone who is thinking that they just want their life to be different? Well, the first thing is to... uh be aware of it and to accept it. Sometimes you can feel the voice inside you, but you more or less decide that you are the problem, you are accurate, and you should, you should just get on with your life like everybody else, you know? But I think it's very important to realize it can be a chance to feel this way uh, because it's going to give you a lot of fuel and motivation to change your situation if you know how to use this as a source of energy and not only a source of frustration. Um, I mean, when I look at my uh, what I did, 
I, could, I, I would never have created this company at 19 if I was not super frustrated with the school system, if I was not super bored and uh, really unhappy. You know, when I was 18, I was um, summoned in the office of the director of the high school. And mm-hmm. he told me, you know, Olivier, I need to tell you something. You are so unmotivated that you are uh, demotivating the teachers. He said, some teachers, they don't want to go to the classroom when you are in the classroom. Oh Can you imagine goodness. that? Yes. So no. I was, and, 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 and I cannot blame him because I was really sleeping on the table. You know, it was crazy sleeping on the desk. Uh, and, and what is crazy is like six months later, I was uh, with this project of creating my company and I was on fire. I, I was super motivated when I was uh, seeing a mountain, you know, uh, in front of me. I was just going through it, like putting a hole into it, you know. And w- what was different? I was the same Olivier. But the difference was I used this frustration I had for to, because I, to, to launch myself into a project that was like um, uh, really challenging for me and that I really, really, really wanted to do. So... To, you can realize that today you can be very frustrated, very apath- apath- apathic. To, you, can, you can just be like, like me, like a black hole of energy for other people, you know? But mm-hmm. it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean anything. You can transform yourself. You can reveal yourself if you find the right project. So the second step after being aware of this, you know, is to find a project that you really, really want to do, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, and... Ideally, it's a project that so motivates you and really challenge you, where you, you will you will think, okay, I need to give everything I have to succeed because if I don't, mo- mostly uh, there, there is a, a fairly high chance I will fail. You know, that being said, you know there are basically two schools of thought in entrepreneurship. You have the school of people saying, hey, you have to burn your ships behind you, so you have only two options: either you win or you die. So this school of thought, I think, could work for some people, but for most, it will not. And it's not mine. My school of thought is, yeah, you need to take some risk to be an entrepreneur, obviously, but it doesn't have to be crazy uh, risk. You don't have to be a chemical, you know. You can mm-hmm. take measured risk. Like, you can like, make sure that even if you fail, it's not going to be the end of the world. And every time... I launched myself into an interesting and maybe a bit uh, crazy for other people project, like dropping out of high school to create my business. I had a plan B, a plan C, a plan D, a plan E in case it didn't work. So when I, I dropped school at, at 9, 18, I was like, okay, if it fails, worst case, I will have to do like one year or two years of sabbatical and I will have learned something useful. I can, only, I can always go back to school, you know, it's not a problem. When I uh, created my second business on the internet, I didn't stop my first business like this. I started like part-time, you know, uh, reading yep. books, writing my blog. And when it started to, to work, I sold my company piece by piece. I, I sold it to three, uh, three other companies. So I, it was really, really gradual, you know. So when you find a project like this, ask yourself, okay, okay can, I can try to do it or I can experiment uh, without changing my life completely. What is the thing that will give me confidence that it could work that I can do right now with my schedule, with, with what I have? And if it works, maybe I will be able to, to make more changes. You know, And it, it worked really well for me, and I think it will work for, for most of the people. I also talk about it in the book. You know? uh, there is really like a, it's important to have the right philosophy of risk-taking. Yes, I agree 100%. Um, and, and that is... That is, I think, what, in my opinion, and you're talking about, like, number one, but that's what holds most people back of of getting out of the thing they're trapped in is because it's an all-or-nothing mentality. They either have to dive in 100% and give up everything that they have or not do it at all. And so, and for most people, that's really a bit scary if they're already established in their life. And so, I'm always like, why don't you see if you really like this or go work here part-time, go get a part-time job at a... <laughs> at a bakery <laughs> and see, do you really, do you really like working in a bakery? Cause you might have this dream of it and you really don't even really like it that much. Or, and I'm amazed at people that go, Oh yeah, I couldn't do that. I, they, they're not willing to test or try or um, see how something might work or try it on a part-time basis, try it on a small scale before they become big. And 
um, they missed the whole boat of opportunity, I think, in finding that thing that could really fuel them. Yeah. It seems like a mountain for 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 most people, and I, I don't think I would have do much if I would have had this mindset of uh, either it's uh, everything or nothing at all. You know, you can right. have both of, of both of both worlds. You know, it's like it's fine, it's fine. Yes, the one thing when I when I'm talking with you and I'm listening to you and we're we're doing this interview by video as well, and. Um, when you get excited, it, it's passion. I mean, when you say you get really excited, you have passion for what you do. And it's like you, it just, you can see it come to life in you. Uh, and, and that energizes you. And I think that that advice that you gave of finding something that brings you that, that you just really love or that you want to do. Um, because when you have it, there's an energy that it creates that really is quite unstoppable. Yes. And, and sometimes, you know, I have people coming to me and saying, okay, Olivier, it's great, but I have a big problem. What? I don't have any passion. What do I do? <laughs> you know? And, yes. and seriously, the first time people asked me that, I was blown away because I'm so passionate about so many things. I could not even uh, understand this, but now I know some people have this problem, you know? Mm -hmm. And I always say to these people, uh, it's probably more a problem of exploration than anything else. Maybe you're super passionate about skydiving, but you never skydive in your life. Maybe you love surfing, but you never surfed. Maybe, you know, and you can go on and go on and go on. Uh, some people are too much into their routines and they never, they don't try enough new stuff, you know. I'm sure for everyone, there is plenty of amazing passions that wa are waiting for you, but you need to, to, you know, to go on a path so you will discover them. Right. Yes. So, so try, try to do for, for people who are in this situation, try to do at least one new activity every week, you know, and so of course you also want to, uh, not, not just to do it one time, right? So you, you, you explore a bit, you see what clicks or not, and then you, you explore a bit deeper, you know, and you really try, try to put your Indiana Jones hat, you know, on your head and go on the adventure to find your passion. I'm sure, I'm sure some of them are waiting for you. I love that so much. I, I get that a lot. People say, I just, I'm not as enthusiastic as you. And I'm like, well, then you can be. You just haven't found what makes you excited yet. Um, so exactly. I absolutely love, love, love that. So thank you so much uh, for being with us today. Now, um, what are, you've got your book that's new and exciting. Any other things that you'd love our listeners to know? And where can they find you? So, yeah, so The Way of the Intelligent Tribal is in all the good bookstores in all the English-speaking uh, countries, even India, which is awesome. Uh, and, yeah, I, they can also go to thewayoftheintelligenttribal.com to uh, get um, a free extract, which are the three principles to succeed in life that we talked about uh, at the beginning of this interview. And then you will have the full principles and all the scientific uh, references. Uh, I wanted to share in the book not only my own experience and the one of hundreds of entrepreneurs I met uh, through my, throughout my career, my career, but also uh, I wanted it to be based on science. There are more than 400 uh, scientific uh, studies referenced in the book. Uh, and so you will be able to see with your own eyes uh, with this extract. I love that. I am I'm, I'm a I'm sort of a stat girl. I love reading about statistics and different things that make it more factual. So and I know there's an awful lot of people like that. So the name of the book again is The Way of the Intelligent Rebel. And uh, it is available now in the U.S. and other countries. We have lots of folks that listen to us from other countries. So this is awesome. And where can they find you as far as your platforms or, you know, website? Yes. So right now, my platform is still uh, the biggest in French, but I have a YouTube channel with my name, Olivier Roland, uh, Oliver Roland, uh, English, actually, and also uh, a website. Uh, which is en like English, you know. Dot Olive, Olivier. Uh, uh, how do you say the like this? The the, the one of the things I, I don't know how to say it in English. <laughs> Roland.com. I mean, if you type my name in Google, you will be able to to find my website in English without problems. 
Okay. <laughs> and it's and it's spelled like Oliver, so for everybody, Roland. So that will be easy for everybody to find. So thank you so much. You, this has been delightful. And um, so to all of our listeners out there, thanks for tuning in today. He had so many great little nuggets. I hope that you'll go back and listen again. He was speaking with such passion and uh, with his accent sometimes. Uh, I think you might want to go back and uh, gr- <laughs> listen to that again so you can grab it. So that will be good for you because there really were some. I just wrote down a whole bunch of notes myself. There were some really great nuggets here. And I always say if you're out walking or you're listening to your podcast like I do, doing many other things, this is one that you might want to go back with your notebook, take some notes because he gave some really, really great some gold nuggets there of wisdom. And we appreciate you so much. Subscribe, leave us a review, but the best form of compliment you can give us is to share this with a friend. So we'll see you next time on Work From Your Happy Place. Thanks for joining us at Work From Your Happy Place. If you like what you hear, please share it with your friends and be sure to rate and review us on iTunes or Stitcher. For a free gift on finding your own happy place, please visit workfromyourhappyplace.com and click on the free audio button. Thanks again for listening.